Animal Control initialized. Hey, hey, people! Five Aces here. Before I dive headfirst into today's cast, let's talk about a few things. First off, I'm going to be hosting a stream on this very YouTube channel next Sunday. You can check it out by checking out my YouTube channel and there's going to be a link provided by YouTube automatically. And uh, on this stream we're gonna play Command & Conquer together, uh, the open array mod, for maybe 5 or 6 hours. Together with Mr. So Scared as our guest star, you know, uh, Kane himself basically. Uh, and we're gonna do this in order to prepare for, and here's the second news, for the next tournament. We're not sure about the format yet, it's probably going to be a big team tournament. Uh, and it's gonna be in... Uh, it's gonna be in co collaboration with Ripley, with maybe some of the other developers, depending on their time schedule. So this is really gonna be cool, this is gonna be great news, check it out. And there's also gonna be a prize pool, so so scared of me. Uh, just sat together and said, you know what, you know what the competitive scene is missing? Uh, a tournament with a prize pool. So that's going to happen. So for all you avid competitive players out there, here's your shot. Alright, now with that out of the way, let's dive right head first into the game. So we have on the one side, on the left side, spawning as Ukraine Yellow, the avid only Russian player uh, from Germany, who has been featured on several casts as of yet. He's a really good player, and really creative. And he's joined by Polaris, who is kind of new. I think Polaris spilled over from the competitive uh, Command & Conquer Kane's Wrath scene when the uh, when the game replays.org section for Open Array was opened up. So he's a really competitive player, still kind of new to, uh, to Red Alert, but he's a really good player regardless. As Yellow gets a uh, vetted up four truck, so that's probably game right there. He has outright one. Perfect. Uh, his opponent for the day is going to be none other than Testosterone Rex, who is a long term member of the community, but I haven't cast him as of yet because uh, he. Yeah, he does. He has different. He's living in a different time zone, I guess, so finding his replays is kind of hard. And he's teamed up with none other than Phoenix who I think is going to stick with his name now. Uh, he used to, He's the artist formerly known as Murto the Ray. But yeah, for the time being he's gonna stick with Phoenix. And this match is played on a on a map older than me, I think. No, not older than me, but uh, it was this map was uh, was contained in the original Red Alert CD. It's called Puddles Redux. So it's one of the, of the few maps that remain that are from a map pool uh, created by Westwood. Because most of the Westwood maps were not really balanced, but this is one of them. And I already like Yellow's Grenadier play. This is going to be real fun. He's going for a f six, seven grand squad, and he already has six rifles out. So take an educated guess where this is going. He's going to try and find the weak spot. And uh, I'd say the weak spot is around here, with the ore refinery being unprotected. It's going to be fun. As the uh, first flag track for Phoenix is out and is taking some pot shots, but he's heading in the absolutely worst direction he could possibly go in right now. He's going to get a cleanup on those three scouts, but he is the Counter Strike. Maybe the Ranger of Testosterone Rex is going to scout this, but I doubt it. He's going for a fast radar though. And the problem with those builds is you usually go for one refinery. A, one refinery is incredibly easy to snipe. I mean, he's got two now, but he was vulnerable earlier. So this can, it's, it's really easy to snipe. And also your cash flow is so bad for some time when you go for a fast war factory. And then you're gonna struggle for cash for the first two or three harvesters. But he's over it now. Nice, supported by Polaris's Ranger. So, they have spotted that there are absolutely no defenses by this testosterone rex. And he's blocking off the barracks. What a nice play. So nothing can, can come out of this here for a while. Everything getting taken out. Ooh, getting some nice crushes with the harvester. Earning his stripes. And earning his wage. Yeah, he, he, he was trying to go for more crushes, but now he's shit out of luck. The refinery's gonna go, gonna go down if it's not being sold. That's gonna be big. Yeah, he's selling out here. 
the Ranger for this Dosteron Rex is swooping in just in time to get some uh, to, some AK-47 salvos to the face by rifle by the Rifleman of Yellow. Oh, a civilian massacre here. Oh, we don't like to see this around here. The Geneva Convention was not... Uh, yeah. Alright, and the Ranger for Polaris survives. God knows why. Yeah, nobody adhered to the uh, to the Geneva Convention this day. Uh, the attack is probably not gonna do more damage, but what do we have here? A sneak attack by Phoenix. He's got his first service. Uh, he rushed the service depot, right? I mean, rushing is kind of a relative term after two ore refineries, but he got it up relatively early. Let's see, it's five minutes, er, around five minutes and ten, I suppose. There is a hind for Polaris, but they don't have this on the radar. So it's gonna be interesting. There were double flag trucks pressing out all the infantry for yellow. Oh, the first hind is taken down without inflicting as much as a single point of damage. That's really bad. Now the ever prevalent uh, flag versus flag duels. <laughs> so funny and usually won by uh, the guy who has a flag, the flag truck with a promotion because they are way tankier. Artillery war is commencing here, and if you're wondering why is testosterone Rex going for a, t uh, for a transport helicopter, they have a larger sight radius than the uh, than the hind, and are also cheaper, which makes absolutely no sense for a transport helicopter. But okay, we're gonna let it slip for now. Getting under flag fire, oh, taking down two artilleries and escaping on what is not even a health bar anymore. I don't even see the red. Holy tits! All right. So, we have this forward base up and it's not been scouted. Right now, Phoenix is the only one uh, who has airplanes. Because the chopper... Uh, one, one chopper for Polaris. But nothing to write home about. They are trying to pick at the, at the ore trucks. That's not gonna work. The armor set of ore trucks allows them to take so much punishment from Heinz. It takes like... 6 or 7 salvos? Something crazy. Early spies out for testosterone Rex. That's quite an investment, keep that in mind, because they're 500 for Germany. And now the first, uh, the expansion MCV for yellow is going down, and now they know what's up. They know what's in store. Uh, yeah. Phoenix is trying to build a siege ring around their base and cut them, cut them off from the ore supplies and bleed them dry. The radar dome for testosterone Rex. If it goes down, is it gonna go down though? If it goes down, th that means no more AA guns for quite some time. He's also floating. Just, just saying, just saying, man. He should maybe go for a second ref anytime soon. Infantry push for yellow. He loves infantry. Oh, hello there. Hello there, Mr. Bond. No, I expect you to die. <laughs> uh, the new, the new release has made it so this is now visible. Oh, but yellow has spotted it. There's a yellow ping. So he knows that uh, those are spies. Unfortunate. Yeah, one of them going down. So there are those spy logos about their heads. Aw, oh, so sad. Mr. Bond didn't make it in time. A second MCV for this. Oh my god. This is gonna be a base push galore. And Polaris has it on the radar. He has spotted it. There is quite the infantry blob. He may be thinking that Phoenix moved his original conyard up, but from what I've seen from uh, the corner of my eye, he got it from a crate. Which is really lucky. Consider that. Uh, four helicopters is enough to take out a conyard, but not if they're, if they're not fully armed. So he should have invested into rearming them. Mm. I don't know, the artillery for Polaris is really, really far forward. I can't see this as being a good idea. He may get the conyard, let's see. There is a massive infantry bomb. This is... This game is all over the map, holy tits! You see, Polaris has managed to establish his conyard without much contestion from Phoenix, and uh, it's now in the backyard of the backyard base that he has, uh, that he has created for himself. And this flag truck, see, this is what flag truck micro can do. Flag trucks can pretty much kill, ah, uh, okay. They can pretty much kill anything, given the right micro. 
or at least the damage dealers. They can't kill tanks on their own, but uh, they don't need to. They're extremely good at their job. A massive infantry force. And, oh, that's smart. He's, um, Phoenix is going for an engineer. He had a short power, power outage, but that's fixed now. The mining operations are being interrupted here. That's big. It denies them so much income. And lots of rifles, but rifles don't really kill anything. Yeah, and there's the engineer. Repairing the conyard. It's such a nice play. I really appreciate that. The second ore refinery going down almost immediately without having collected like a single scrap of ore. So many... Uh, some artilleries, but the protection is not good. The only thing that's in here right now is a gap generator. Um, okay. Medium tanks now. This might be an answer. Wow. <laughs> Phoenix got so lucky with the duplication crates. First the MCV, now his rocket soldiers. So he's, he's got a lot of assets to play with. And here comes the parabombs. Not really. I mean, he should have sent the parabombs in first and then sent in the infantry squad. That way he's just taking, uh, taking free punishment from the flame towers and bunkers. But to each, to each his own. Uh, another engineer, just in case. And the gap generator is really annoying because you can't fight what you can't see, basically. So the artillery can fire from the from the shadow, from the fog of war. Uh, the engineer is tanking. Not sure. <laughs> not sure if that was intentional. Uh, power going down. Two more power plants being taken out, and a combat drop taking on the turret. There is a Chronos visa. Basically, uh, the I, I would have said left side, but they're not the left, they're, they're for the most to the left anymore. So the center team has got the tech advantage with the Allied Tech Center and the Chronosphere for Polaris. That's, this is a really interesting game all over the map. And Testosterone Rex has nothing but a small pocket of, of a base, and he's uh, pumping all his, his assets into uh, the, the northwest. He has the helipad there. Oh, the radar got taken out, by the way, it got replaced by another radar. Uh, thing is, he's running low on ore. He doesn't have any mining operations running right now. And now, uh, the, the backyard, backyard base, holy shit, this is base, baseception. <laughs> uh, the, the backyard, backyard base has spewed out too many rifles to deal with for, for Phoenix. Meanwhile, uh, the artilleries are still pressuring here. This is a this is a crazy game. This is freaking crazy town. Two tanks for uh, for testosterone Rex, and there's nothing to stop the tanks here. They could go for the Chronosphere, they could go for the Eco, which they are doing. Smart move. They're killing off all the harvesters for Polaris. It's so hard to uh, to maintain your cool in a, in a match like this. Uh, but one thing that Team Two is go has going for them, or or uh, Team Center has going for them, is they have more vision with the Heinz as Testosterone Rex keep, tends to keep his hinds to the back of the base. <laughs> now the re repair squad is, at, is on, on full duty. Mechanics and engineers. Really? Oh, he chronoed... Polaris chronoed the tanks into, uh, into, the, into the enemy base, but they're gonna respawn in a couple secs. And at the same time, another base push by Phoenix. He's trying to establish a base here with another MCV. And there is no, there are no defenses up again. If he manages to get this established here, right around here, this would probably be game because it would, would take uh, Yellow's mining operations out. What kind of game is this? Holy tits. Yellow is floating like mad. He's got, they put, everyone has like a bank of at least 4k. Wow. More Tesla coils being pumped out. <laughs> what? What is even going on? I don't know anymore. Uh, the siege is, is still continuing here, and they haven't found, like, Testosterone Rex hasn't found a way to break the siege here. He would need Iron Curtain Flax or Iron Curtain Light Tanks to deal with this. Uh, now there's no protection, so one single light tank might do it. Uh, the counter Tesla coil, and there's going to be a reverse counter Tesla coil coming up in a sec. Oh, the V2's running into range, but the V2 for yellow has had some really great positioning so far. Ah, uh, yeah, you can't run in there with uh, with your air assets, nope. 
The, the repair squad is gonna be, get taken out, no. Uh, basically, Testosterone Rex needs to produce like, like a light tank from his war factory and kill off all the artilleries. Uh, but he doesn't know that, he doesn't have the, the observer's advantage. So many crates in the back. Oh, the nav set just went up. Let's see for whom. Polaris. Yes. And now Polaris... See, that's, that's the thing. Um, iron curtaining defensively is never a good move, I think. You always want to iron curtain defensively so you can uh, buy some time to take out your attackers. If you just iron curtain a power plant, what good is that going to do you in the long run? Uh, the artillery, the artillery shells are gonna are gonna continue hitting, and they're gonna uh, when the iron curtain times out, they're just gonna kill it off. So yeah, I always prefer curtaining offensively. The only special case being when uh, someone is trying to snipe my nuke with his nuke. And now, yeah, they have scouted it with the uh, with the spy plane. It's probably gonna go in. Another MCV getting pumped out. I think they're they're trying to defend this base corner, but it's it's under pressure. I give it like eh, I I don't give this attack high chances of success. And no one has found a way to deal with yellow's rifle spam. Curiously enough, because rifles are not that strong, but there is just they are just not building anything to counter them. Like a couple flame turrets or a couple flak tracks, but uh, this game didn't feature any many flag tracks so far, surprisingly enough, because uh, they're really in the meta and they're really strong. 4v2s get prepared for yellow, he, he tries to put, he's trying to to push out or to at least kill off the, the conyard with a v2 snipe. But more and more conyards getting, like Phoenix has just produced conyards in the in the last five minutes. MCV, MCV, that's his build order. 5 APM. MCV, MCV. Tech center, is he gonna get sniped? So much anti-air, I think. Yeah, no! Wow, that's a big deal. Really good by Polaris though, uh, to protect it with like five AA guns. I mean, the angle was kind of unfortunate for, uh, for, for Murto or Phoenix. Yeah, sniping the, sniping the MCV, but again, how many MCVs do we have as a backup? One, two, and uh, soon to be three, I guess. Let's see. Uh, it's looking like... It's starting to look like they're pushing back. <laughs> the repair goon squad is still at it. In full effect. Ooh, that's too many too many bazookas. You don't want to go in there. See, and the problem with artilleries is they can't do hit and run. Uh, they're basically here to stay and they're here to, to do their damage or die trying. While the V2s can just kite back. I, I just like the V2s way more. In terms of the actual gameplay and strangely enough this this pocket of the map here hasn't been contested testosterone rex has nothing he has like one tank a couple couple infantry that about that's about it he does have base defenses other than AA guns so just uh, a couple of v2 rockets and two backed up by two two uh black trucks could do wonders they could push him out of here and that's his major mining ops right now. Ooh, the iron. he had to fire the Iron Curtain to protect his war factory, but again, Iron Curtain defensively, they're just gonna be back in a minute. And what's has them? Okay, they're, everyone is broke right now. Polaris managed to squeeze out a nuke, and he's probably, he's Germany, so he might go for, for an all-in chrono with a double MCV quad, quad artillery. Mm. He's also got the Chronosphere up, but for now he's content just, just base pushing a bit. But you need A8 guns to defend against the Hinds. Otherwise it's just, just gonna get slaughtered. It's, it's always so sad for me to see so many transport helicopters and uh, see people not using them, because they, they can be great. They are amazing in fact. Yep. Here's the AA gun. Just as predicted. Uh, and again, the base is gonna fall. And just in time. The A gun went down just in time. So, the Yaks are gonna kill off the V2s. And the Conny are still standing strong. That's a problem. Now there are flag trucks and they're vetted. Holy. 
They're all sorts of vented. So many ore trucks for yellow just standing around and idling because he has nothing. The yak crash! The yak crash took out the, the MCB husk. And then even after the height changes of the um, of the height uh, of the yak crashes. So they're traveling at a, at a different trajectory now. And there is still a second backup MCB for Polaris if this one gets if that one gets killed off, so he can continue the push. And he will continue fortifying. Unfortunately, it's it's kind of the Allied meta. You have to protect your artilleries, and, and seeing as the Allies don't have decent non-naval, non-base anti-air, because rocket soldiers alone just don't cut it, uh, you always have to protect your artilleries with the base as of now. Trying for the snipes here, but yellow ain't gonna get nothing. This is too too heavily fortified in the middle. The top side would be absolutely uncontested. Oh, curtain flax. Some more veterancy for you? Yes, please. I'll take I'll take a bunch of veterancy with the side of kill bounties. He's gonna get the second MCV as well if he if he focuses. Yep. Yeah. And <laughs> they go down so fast to flag fire. I don't know whether armor set is so good against light. It's actually crazy. Ah, uh, <laughs> holy shit, so much happening this game. Um, they have the uh, center side has the advantage of, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna resort to them as center side because they're not, they are not left side anymore. I'm gonna keep continuing this trend. They have the uh, nav set advantage and the tech advantage. They have double nukes now, uh, but can they hold on for that long? Because the pressure is just enormous. Nice crash. Ooh, there are some para bombs on the way taking the fucking scenic route very nice to see more and more of the base getting chewed up by the artilleries this might be a really good really good set of para bombs taking out all the defensive line oh he was scattering he pressed the x key very nice so he saved one artillery yeah. not a big deal but it's it, it helps in the long run now the war factory goes down there is a second backup war factory but for now, what is he producing? He has stopped producing whatever he was going for. He was uh, just a flag. Okay. Nothing major. Artillery is still hammering. And testosterone is so committed to the artillery play. We have seen like three light, three medium tanks out of him so far and they haven't worked. Apart from the one who took uh, that took out two or three ore trucks. But now center side has the has the control back. Here's another curtain. Curtaining at the at the very last second is gonna get nice. He's gonna pick off all the artilleries again. Maybe behind possibly. Yes indeed. Big deal. Big deal actually. It's, uh, it's gonna kill off like units worth 3,000 usually. The defensive line and the harvester, so he can move in. And Yellow's hit and run, I mean this time he got caught, but Yellow's hit and run with the V2s is so good. He's one of the better players at doing this. He, and he's a Soviet only player. He, I've never seen him play allies, not even not even in team games. So he, he just has the experience with how to use V2s, how to use flax. And I also never see him build mammoths, so he's he's also an avid fan of the of the light armor composition. There are only a few players in this in this community who go for pure heavy armor, and it's it's just countered so easily. The nukes are coming up soon now, soonish anyway, three and five minutes respectively, and finally testosterone Rex is uh is using the is using his choppers to scout more. He should have done that earlier, I feel. No real anti-air, like the, the lack of anti-air is, is giving Polaris and Yellow trouble right now. Another Tesla coil being popped on, but yeah. Nice try. Again, getting picks at the eco. And now Polaris is feel safe enough to move out with the second MCV. Let's see the 
the artillery is still going strong, but keep in mind that there is no anti-air here right now. So if... Does he have this? Does he have it spotted? Oh, the gap generator prevents it, obviously. But another Tesla coil getting popped down just in range. That was an unnecessary curtain. Most excess excessive use of iron curtains that I've ever seen. Artillery shells, good artillery shells landing, and my god, what what wonder would mechanics do in this game? There were so many husks left to reclaim, of husks of harvesters, husks of M MCVs. Yeah, and now he's gonna run in and he's gonna see that there is not much, not much protecting those artilleries. He would need a Tesla here. Ah, uh, but yeah, they did it. They did it the wrong way around. So, yellow went for a Sam side and. Polaris went for a gun turret, they should do it the other way around with a Tesla coil for yellow and an AA gun for Polaris, which is it's like 500% more effective. It's, uh, uh, don't quote me on that number, but uh, it's something ridiculous. How more effective the Soviet anti-ground anti and the Allied anti-air defenses are at their, at their respective job than their counterparts. Uh, and the flag tracks chew through everything. That's why they are so strong. Pressure's taking out more and more. Ah, now I can pull back. He's done the damage. Now there is an AA gun. What are you doing? Testosterone Rex. He's running right into the AA gun. But he, he has established himself in the middle. And that's like within spitting range of the missile silo. Let's take a look at the ore situation. There is... Ah, nice. Nice curtain for yellow. So he's gonna get most of the defenses here if he focus fires correctly. And at the same time, Testosterone Rex managed to claw himself back into, into the middle. And see there are one, two, three, four unharvested ore patches. Most of them are on the eastern side. So they could, let's see how the income situation is looking like for now. Yeah, about even just Phoenix is skyrocketing. His EcoBoom strategy with uh, spamming refiners has paid off and the power's down. That's a big deal, especially for the Allies player, as now, the gates are open for any type of air units, as long as they can keep the power down. They now know that, that there is not much excess power, and yeah, Phoenix is attacking the power plant here. So Polaris needs to get his power back ASAP, or he's in, or he's in dipshit. Uh, the war factory for Yellow getting taken out, and it's the only war factory for him. Is he gonna... No, he can't. Curtain now. Oh, here's the nuke firing. He hadn't scout he hasn't scouted. He should have used the spy plane beforehand because the spy plane was off cooldown, I think. Let's see. Yeah, no. Not a good nuke. Let's the other one, yellow's nuke is in is in two minutes, so let's see if that's gonna be a better nuke. The war factory has survived, by the way. Kind of crazy. But it did. As has the defensive line for testosterone Rex. So he's standing strong on this front. It's looking more and more like they're like Phoenix is getting pushed back from his uh, from his forward base shenanigans. He has one con yard left, and it's uncovered right now. Plus, he has like one refinery here. The rest got killed off. Testosterone Rex just feels daring enough to move out, just in time to run into Curtain Flax. So this is gonna kill everything, uh, unless he force fires the ground for no apparent reason whatsoever. What? Okay, no. <laughs> he's he's realized the errors of his ways. Still losing three artilleries, and the shells are landing on testosterone Rex's conyard. That's no, that's not gonna survive. The turn rate is too slow. He would need a mechanic right now to reclaim the husk. He has mechanics. Move him, move him in, please. Do something. Maybe he doesn't know about it? Too bad, like, that's an opportunity wasted. Uh, Alright. Oh, the airfield isn't right in range of the AA gun, so anything that's gonna spawn from there is gonna kill off, like, immediately. Chew through. More curtain flax here. But they didn't find anything yet. That's, that's the thing with curtaining offensively, you have to scout first. You have to scout what, what threats to take on. So many gap generators for Polaris.
they are not contributing though. I mean, yeah, they're obscuring the vision and they're being profoundly annoying. Uh, testosterone Rex, don't do that. <laughs> Just like Amphi, okay. He's the second on my ban list after Amphi, who I, I don't trust them with, uh, with helicopter piloting licenses ever again. I'm like, no sir, your hind cards have been revoked. Nuclear launch detected. And it's gonna land... What the hell? Where's the logo? I seriously can't see it right now. Here in the middle. Oh, yeah. He got the defensive line and the mobile army for Testosterone Rex decent, but he didn't get, get a conyard. He, uh... Nuke truck! Yes, that's what we're gonna zoom in on. It's gonna be fun. Taking down the power. I mean, yeah, again, nuke trucks are hardly ever cost efficient, and neither was this one because it didn't take down anything. But it it has it has kind of delayed uh, their power because it, it has damaged all the power plants. And if you can if you can continue doing this, he will be in a good spot because it can, can take down the power eventually. Oh, the hero pillbox. Is this the pillbox of legends? It is. Still alive. Still alive. Focus. Focus. One more bazooka. Nope. It's the pillbox of legends. Nice. And Polaris has to take more and more of his stuff offline. Here is a second, here's a curtain flag for yellow. Not finding what he needs really. I think he would need to uh, to push back at the at the western front. This this siege ring they have created around around yellows and Polaris' space is really uh, that's something new. It's a, it's an interesting strategy and it's also really uh, demanding on your APM. You can't just uh, have one army. You have to always be active on multiple fronts. Yep, Polaris' stuff is getting picked off. Again, that's the problem with the allies. Uh, with the allied light armor. Everything gets countered by flag trucks. And here is the second nuke truck. <sighs> if Polaris had paid closer attention, he could have focused it with the bunker. And caused it to kill every... Oh, that was nice though. That was the first uh, good nuke truck that I've casted so far. Where I'm like, yeah, that was definitely worth it. That has taken down the power, again. Tesla coils for yellow. Yeah. Let's see. Iron Curtain far from coming up, as is yellows. I mean, uh, yellows is a bit closer. Maybe another snipe attempt on the tech center would be big, because it would, uh, it would deny them so much information. The bazookas aren't firing. Yeah, now he's, he's found the attack move key. All is good. All is forgiven. Uh, can he hold on for another four minutes for the next nuke? Not sure. They are low tech. The low tech play seems to pay have paid off for Phoenix. Another nuke truck. Yes. That one wasn't good, but it at least took down the defensive front other than pillbox. Uh, it did more damage to his own war factory. Let's be honest. Yeah. Finally, they are mining from their leftover ore patches. So they are mining, their mining is still good, while yellow is struggling with like long distance mining. Long distance mining to all the way to freaking Baghdad. I don't know why. Maybe it's just a leftover feature from the original game where the harvesters were fucking dumb. And the, the de developers were like, yeah, we, we should retain this. It's a classic feature, right? Right, right guys? <laughs> Next nuke track, he's probably gonna... Uh, oh, he would have coupled it with the curtain. But as is, it's gonna take down the radar. Nope, he's going deeper. Holy shit. This is gonna be... He's parking it right next to the... Uh, yeah. To the con yard. Beautiful. Beautiful nuke tracks. What the hell? He managed to engineer this? I'm like baffled. Yellow... Is, is a sneaky, is a really sneaky player. Man, the Soviet techs are not getting taken down. It has more health than the allied counterpart. This was, he has taken this with a ninja engineer. Basically a ninja near. Wow. <laughs> That's why you don't mask grands, Phoenix. Hmm, uh, what a game, what a game here. I mean, it's not gonna be enough to turn the tables, I don't think. Oh, power down, yeah. So the conyard is definitely out. Mm-hmm. Next nuke truck. <laughs> this game. 
<laughs> this is crazy town here. If he manages to get it in, to get it right in here, it's oh, okay. He detonated it prematurely. The Tesla coil was in the way. The gap at the edge is something you gotta watch this map. Indeed. One Tesla coil for yellow still standing there. The missile silo is almost taken down, so there's not gonna be a second nuke, and Polaris is out of power completely. He also can't rebuild right now until he gets another MCV. So they are probably down and out. Despite Yellow's clutch MCV steal, but Murta spotted it in time. He just got uh, before too much damage was done. Like, if this had went unchecked, he could have gotten the Soviet tech center, he could have gotten all the power, he could have gotten the radar, all the all the service, de the service depot, airfield, second conyard. Oh, this would have been so disgusting. But, holy shit, it's, it's looking like game over now. Ah, another nuke truck! <laughs> no. And he didn't get rifles from the cell, he got civilians. That's it. I mean, there is no recovery here. Holy shit. Uh, what's happening? Oh, the replay must have been corrupted after one of the players left. Let's see. It doesn't show it. But that, that happens sometimes when uh, one of the players drops out or just uh, just uh, quits the game. And the replay tends to... It's just like, no, I'm not gonna work. No pasará. Ah, oh, fantastic game. Crazy. Like, uh, th this was straight up crazy town here. Uh, the siege ring for test for testosterone Rex and Phoenix has paid off big time. Even though like testosterone Rex uh, wasn't that much of a part of the Western Front, he was more concerned with uh, pushing in the middle and doing some uh, being distractive, I guess. While Yellow and uh, Yellow and Polaris were struggling mostly due to the power. Uh, one of the biggest early decided game changers was when. Uh, Murta or Phoenix picked up a crate here, and it was a duplication crate for an MCV. That's like, if you already have an MCV, there is like a, I don't know, 5% chance of that happening, or even lower maybe. Not sure. Don't quote me on that. So he managed to get out two, ba two bases and two MCVs, which is a massive game changer. And yeah, he's been generally lucky with the duke crates. Let's just put it that way. But a uh, fantastic game. Really fun. Thanks to Murto, I think, for posting this on Game Replays. I had it from there because it um, it had a really high rating. Fun to watch, fun to cast. Uh, guys, see you, hopefully see you on Sunday on my stream. Mr. So Scared is gonna be there. And we're also gonna talk about the tournament there. Other than that, stay tuned, guys. See you next week. Five aces, out. Battle control terminated.